Holo Audio doesn't need an introduction anymore and you can find them at every corner of Hi-Fi. But ever since my friend Cameron of Golden Sound posted his detailed measurements for the Holo Audio Bliss KTA version and shortly after posting his video review, let's just say that some of my Class A amplifiers, solid state amplifiers, uh, felt a little bit jealous and my wallet started playing a hide and seek game. It slowly but surely started picking my interest and with the help of the European distributor I was able to get a loaner unit so I could deliver a well thought written and video review. It comes in at 3398 US dollars in the good old USA and for 3890 euros across the pond in Europe. But is it worth it? Maybe? Let's find out. So let's start with connections. We have a 4-pin XLR jack, we have a quarter inch headphone jack and a 4.4 millimeter balanced output. So this is basically the golden standard uh, for headphone amplifiers and my headphones already started wiggling their cables. We have a monochrome LCD screen in the middle. We have a clicky volume knob for a very precise uh, you know, volume control. And we have a few buttons that will let you power on or off the unit, engage its UI or mute the unit. Now look at that beautiful back panel. I'm glad to see two pairs of XLR inputs, which are so helpful when doing DAC comparisons. And there's a pair of RCA inputs as well. Since it can be used as a standalone preamp, you can also find a pair of XLR and RCA analog outputs to be used in a two-channel stereo setup, but more about that in a Jiffy. As for the build, Bliss impresses with its uh, sheer size, with its weight, and uh, I do believe it will impress a veteran audiophile. My main headphone amplifier weighs 30 kilos, and while some of you might complain about a Bliss weight of 10 kilos, I think that it has the right size and the right uh, weight. Most end game ducks and uh, you know headphone amplifiers and streamers have pretty much the same weight, so uh, really I have no complaints here. As for the build quality itself, as you can see, it's built like a tank uh, with thick aluminum plates all around that should protect its internal components from any nasty wireless interference. Instead of using off-the-shelf metallic feet with rubber inlays, as most amplifier makers are doing, they went ahead and carved their own feet on CNC machines, which hold five gel inserts per foot that will absorb vibrations coming from within the unit. Under its hood, you will see one of the most beautiful layout and PCB when it comes to headphone arm builds. Just look how beautiful everything looks. First of all, this is a fully discreet dual mono class A headphone amplifier and preamplifier. And if you came to see some fancy components, then Bliss has them all. Starting with an awkward custom made transformer, OCC silver wiring, audio note and Moondorf capacitors, eight beautifully arranged amplifier modules made from discrete components. A crazy number of analog relays, it has it all. Power-wise, we're talking about 12 watts of pure Class A goodness via its balanced connections in 32 ohms via that low Z setting. Via high Z, I believe it goes up to 2.5 watts in 150 ohms. And if you're asking yourselves what is the difference between low Z and high Z setting, that is not actually the gain, that is the output impedance of its headphone jacks. Low Z stays uh, very close to 0 ohms and high Z sits between 8.5 and 17 ohms. Although the high Z setting can have a beneficial effect on your high impedance dynamic headphones uh, like Sennheiser HD800, like Biodynamic T1 or any of those 300 and 800 ohm headphones, uh, adding a little bit of mid bass and just taming a little bit of that upper treble it can have a bad effect on your low impedance dynamic headphones because 
uh, you'll be losing some damping factor and you'll be uh, weakening the transient response. So the sound will get a little slower and not that impactful. But if you follow the rule of eights, then you'll get maximum performance out of your headphones and out of Holo Bliss. All right, guys, if you want to know more about its inner workings, I suggest checking out my written review, which I left below. And for the rest of us, let's check how this bad boy is performing. This one arrived around 10 days ago. Uh, it came fully burnt in, so I didn't need to put another week of burning on this one. And impatient as I am, I started listening to tunes via some of my planar and dynamic headphones. And let me tell you that my first impression was not very positive. Uh, where was that bass slam and those crazy dynamics where everybody was raving about? I simply couldn't feel those. Although everything else was uh, falling into place, it had that amazing depth, amazing note separation, big sound stage. It was always very fortless sounding, very real sounding, and it had that uh, amazing silence in between passages that very few class amplifiers are having. Although it sounded quite polite and not so dynamic, not so impactful with my headphones. But when uh, its top plate started bringing up the heat exactly as it does right now, then it completely changed into a very different sounding headphone amplifier. Uh, it simply redeemed itself. I believe that those dynamics came back to life. Uh, that bass slam was bottomless. It was relentlessly hitting my eardrums. Uh, the mid-range felt exactly as neutral, but it felt more refined sounding, more graceful, and the treble remained exactly as effortless and engaging. The very first thoughts that Bliss planted into my head uh, were not about powerful dynamics, but about its depth, about its note separation, and about its holography. And I now understand exactly why these guys are calling themselves Holo Audio, because its holography is nothing short of spectacular. And in this regard, it sounds very close to a well-made uh, tube amplifier. Uh, my second thoughts were about it having a good linearity. Now, there are two types of linear sounding headphone amplifiers. Those that uh, can make your music overly sharp, maybe to a point of being clinical, like those that are playing with negative feedback, like those that are playing with noise shipping techniques, like THX AAA amplifiers, like NFC amplifiers of topping, like PLFC amplifiers of SMSL. Uh, but this one is not doing any of that. This one sounds real. This one uh, is very effortless sounding. And my final thoughts were about that peace of mind that it was bringing forward. Everything was super effortless sounding, very easy going, nothing was really forced. So I could listen to even ultra linear headphones, ultra linear DACs, and it always uh, would sound very real, you now effortless, like pouring very easily. Uh, I never get those bright trebles or piercing trebles that never really happened on the Bliss. A while ago, I owned that Benchmark HPA4, which at that time had the lowest measured noise floor. Now, as uh, technology was moving forward, uh, a few years later, uh, some more affordable amplifiers from the likes of Topping and SMSL had a very similar performance in terms of noise floor rejection. Now, when we're dealing with Class A fully discrete amplifiers that have on average about four to five times more components to say uh, all pump based amplifiers, then dealing with the noise becomes a much, much bigger problem. With all those uh, Class A amplifiers that I have tried before, some of them uh, I have in my house, uh, only some of them had a pretty good noise rejection, but only at normal listening volumes. At maximum volumes, all of them had some kind of noise. Now, I don't know what exactly Holo Audio did with their Bliss. I really don't know what really happens, but with five pairs of ultra-sensitive IMs, I simply couldn't detect any kinds of traces of noise, even at maximum power on the balanced output. So this is not only the cleanest sounding Class A fully discrete that I have tried so far around here, but most probably the cleanest headphone amplifier full stop. Bliss is undeniably a very powerful headphone amplifier by Headphone Amp Mafia standards. 
its current delivery have a very strong grip over headphone drivers and its power output offers really great dynamics uh, with both planar and dynamic headphones. Although powerful, this is not really the most powerful amplifier out there and it becomes evident once you start using some uh, ultra low sensitivity headphones like high performance Osvara, like uh, DCA Stealth, like DCA Expanse. If your DAC outputs a regular you know, 4 volt output, the industry standard, then this might be a problem. So you might be maxed out or close to maxed out. You might be get some uh, less impressive headroom, so dynamics wouldn't be that impressive. If you use a DAC that can output a higher voltage than the industry standard, then uh, this might not be a problem at all. Now, I used a 20 volt DAC and I used a 4 volt DAC and there was a substantial difference. Uh, the 20 volt uh, DAC uh, sounded considerably better uh, via Hive Monsters Vara. So this one works uh, good with the Hive Monsters Vara, even great on several occasions. Uh, but I consider that this is not the best option in terms of dynamics base lamp for the Hive Monsters Vara. And as I was saying on several occasions, you might be maxed out with a few tracks, high dynamic range tracks, DSD recordings and so on. Setting that aside, every other headphone that I have in my possession sounded absolutely fantastic via Bliss, even those Sennheiser HD800S, which usually need a very potent, uh, very you know, powerful headphone amplifier to awake those dynamics, and this one provided. As I blacklist those low sensitivity headphones and start using the rest of my headphones, then it will be exchanging my eardrums with punching bags because this is one mean sounding headphone amplifier. The sound gets heft, it gets weight, and it will start playing with my imagination as the sounds are taking a shape. So it's biased into constant class operation, so it will be providing a constant current output at idle and full power, meaning that when music plays, uh, it's a really big challenge finding a con. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack. In my recent Maze Audio review, I mentioned that those can transform from obedient creatures to some frenzied pugilists, uh, depending on the amplifier that drives them. They are mostly clean and resolving sounding and, you know, big sounding, but uh, to awake those crazy dynamics, you need an amplifier the size uh, of Bliss. And I do believe that this one fully transformed those uh, is Elite, even HD800S by Sennheiser, always adding a little bit more oomph in the bass. So in this regard, this one sounds very similar, even maybe surpasses that uh, Firm Or and Barson Soloist Freex in terms of dynamics, as this one has an amazing sense of speed, rhythm, and timing. Throughout the history of amplifier design, the primary goal was always to preserve signal purity, dynamic range, without adding any kind of colorations into the mix, without adding any kind of distortions. And after a century, the bottleneck is no longer the amplifier, but actually the downstream equipment like uh, your streamer, your source, your transport, your DAG. And this is really the highest praise that I can give to the Holo Bliss. I didn't feel that anything was out of place, even though super small, tiny air fluctuations were heard via Bliss, so clearly this is a highly resolving, a very detailed sounding unit. However, there is one thing that you will never experience via Bliss, and that is over sharpness or super strong leaning edges that could lead to a clinical sound, to some listening fatigue, that will never happen via Bliss. The trebles are clean and extended, but never sharp, uh, never gritty, so those are very effortless, very real sounding in a way. So this one feels clean and defined for the most time, very effortless and real, but uh, it will never bring that over sharpness. It's a very interesting sensation knowing that uh, your tunes were cleaned up already, and I'm getting this sensation all the time with the bliss. Moving on to sound stage and imaging, the very first headphone amplifier that sparked my imagination was actually Audio GD Master 9. And a few years later, I feel that Flux Lab Acoustics Volot was, uh, felt like a spiritual successor, always trying to uh, sound big, layered, you know, uh, changing completely what I felt about headphone amplifiers. Trying even to mimic the sound of really well-made tube amplifiers. 
However, when Traphomatic Primavera arrived at my place, it completely changed uh, headphone listening for me in a very big way because I was no longer listening to headphones, I was listening to speakers sitting somewhere around here. It was very big sounding, it is very big sounding still, very layered, uh, it had very big note separation in a way, so uh, it's a very different beast. And I do feel that Holo Bliss, while considerably cheaper, tries to mimic that kind of sound, so the sound of a really well-made uh, tube amplifier without being a tube amplifier. So this one is a very good in terms of depth, scale, sound stage, note separation. Quite probably this is the biggest sounding Class A amplifier that I have uh, tried so far. It's certainly bigger sounding than Theorem Or, bigger sounding than uh, Barson Solis 3X, and might I say on the same level, or maybe even a little bit bigger than Enleom Amp 23R, so just outstanding in this regard. Bliss effortlessly expands and contracts all the sounds all around you, so all those intimate underground blues tunes will feel like all those musicians are playing in your room and big orchestras will feel like there is more room all around you. A few months ago I upgraded to Accord Ultima 3 preamplifier, that forever changed the sound of that core Dave in a very significant way. When I swapped that Ultima 3 with the Hollow Bliss, I didn't feel that the sound lost some weight or some control. Uh, it's effortless and uh, its holographic sound was immediately picked up by my speakers. And for a moment, I just thought that this is a really great sounding preamplifier. The only thing that differentiates this one from the Ultima 3 is that this one is not as light fitted is not as fast and micro-level information is not pushed forward as great as it happens on the Ultima 3. Also, there is slightly less air in between the layers. That one is slightly bigger sounding. But apart from that, uh, its rock star personality was felt immediately. And everything that I have uh, described to this one before just moved into my stereo, except that it didn't really light up the fire like uh, Ultima 3 did. But you should understand that I'm comparing uh, apples with oranges here because this one is almost uh, three times more affordable. Holo Audio is separately offering a dedicated preamplifier which is called Serene, which I'm pretty sure solves the biggest issues of the Bliss. So if you need a dedicated preamplifier, then Serene looks like a much better deal. There are two versions of the Bliss when it comes to bass definition and dynamics in general. The very first version appears when you just power on the unit and you'll get that shy, polite and uninteresting type of bass that is not reaching the lowest octaves. Uh, but roughly one hour later when the case gets warm, almost hot, uh, then you'll get a very different beast in terms of dynamics and the bass uh, just will be coming from the deepest pits of Tartarus. It gets heft, it gets weight, it gets punch. But what truly impressed me are not those things, but its texture and its long sustain, which I believe are more interesting. As a general rule of thumb, fully discrete amplifiers will sound natural, organic, and mid-range purity is already a highlight of such amplifiers. However, there is a small portion of such amplifiers that will sound real and cohesive, and those are Class A uh, zero feedback amplifiers. I do believe that Bliss uh, somehow mastered those skills already, so uh, there is a sense of refinement and liquidity and effortlessness and just right when it comes to mid-range. It does justice to vocals and everything that has to do with voices. You can feel those vocal cords vibrating, uh, you can feel the pitch of the human voice and uh, this one will sound just outstanding in the mid-range. The second reason why you might want to get a fully discrete Class A headphone amplifier has to do with the rendition of the treble, and that's why many Heifman users are slowly transitioning towards uh, such amplifier designs. It has nothing to do with detail retrieval or transparency of the treble, but how real the trebles are sounding. Now, remember those uh, harsh sounding uh, THX AAA amplifiers? Well, that is no longer the case with the Bliss. What struck me wasn't extension or detail in the treble, but the way those cymbal crashed on my eardrums and the way those snare drum hits 
fully preserved those short leaf thumbs. Those things impress me quite a lot. No comparisons for now, but I'll be making a high-end solid state headphone amplifier sparring contest in the following months. A few amplifiers will be showing up soon, so expect a complete comparison very soon. Wrapping things up, if I ignore my initial experience that I had with Hyphen Susvara and its chill out nature before it gets warmed up, then uh, there is hardly I can nitpick about this one. A few head files uh, might uh, crave for sharper leading edges for a touch more sparkle in the upper treble, maybe for a smidge more power output. Uh, but apart from that, uh, there is little to nitpick about this one. Starting with its build quality, with its uh, component selection and finishing with its uh, sound quality, this is exactly how a high-end headphone amplifier should perform in the true meaning of the word and they easily won my highest gold award. I believe they truly deserved it. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. A much longer in-depth review can be found below. Please check that out and as usual, Stay positive and keep your chin up. My name is Sando and I'll see you soon. Cheers!